This week, we meet former 70.3 world champion Michael Raylett before his full-distance Ironman debut. We show highlights of the Ironman Regensburg and follow local Ziggy Hellinger on his first Ironman. And four times world champion Chrissy Wellington relives her maiden victory in Hawaii in 2007. Regensburg is the host location for the first Ironman event in Germany for the 2012 season. In its third year, the event takes athletes from the swim in Lake Guggenberger on a stunning bike course through the Donau Valley, passing the historic Valhalla Monument and finishing with the marathon run in the historic Old Town. Michael Raylett, two times 70.3 Ironman world champion and brother of Andreas Raylett, chose Regensburg for his full distance Ironman debut. With wins in 70.3 races in Mallorca and Rapas Villona, the 32 year old had a good start to the season and he eagerly anticipates his first Ironman. In Regensburg, it's very important for me to experience and feel the mental and psychological side of things. When I get to Kona, I want to know that I'm not only physically fit, but also mentally prepared so I can avoid the mistakes I'll make on Sunday. In a half Ironman, you can regulate a lot through your performance, with your physical and physiological abilities. But in an Ironman, the mentality and psychological strength play the key role, and that's what I respect the most at the weekend. The tingling sensation is there, and I know I won't be able to sleep tonight as it starts at 7 o'clock in the morning. It's a mixture of anticipation and nervousness. There are also hundreds of amateurs that take part in the Ironman Regensburg. One of them is local Ziggy Hellinger, who caught the Ironman bug in 2010 watching the inaugural event. Emotionally, it was the biggest thing I'd ever seen. I've watched a lot of other sports and normally only the first counts and the second is forgotten the next day. In an Ironman, it's different, as everyone who finishes is a winner. The 48-year-old was fascinated by the Ironman philosophy and changed his life around to try to become an Ironman himself. I said it jokingly with a beer in my hand and a weight of 110 kilos at the time, but the goal inside me was there. Once he had the goal in mind, there was no turning back, but his wife and daughter didn't quite believe he was serious. At the beginning, when he said, I'm going to do an Ironman, I said, yeah, it's nothing. You just got to train. But when it became obvious how much he's got to train, I felt differently, and I'm very proud of him. With the support of his wife and his daughter, Ziggy started a strict training regime, totaling up to 18 hours a week. I really enjoyed some training days and others when it was cold outside and rained weren't as enjoyable and then I had days where I thought mate you're crazy what are you doing the day before the race pros and amateurs alike go through their last preparations and also check in their bikes into transition one of the men's favorites Dirk Bockel from Luxembourg is quick to play down the favorite tag. Michael Raylett has the race number one and he's the main favorite. I don't know how he's going to approach this race, but I'm in good shape. I want to have a good race and I'm here to win the race, so I'm going to try and make it happen. I'll gladly pass over the role of the favorite, and I know that Dirk Bockel from Luxembourg is here. He was fourth in Hawaii last year with a very good performance, and I think that he's going to be the one to beat on Sunday in Regensburg. I have won many short distance races, had top 10 rankings in the World Cup, won 70.3 races, but what's missing is an Ironman victory. In the women's field, favorite Heidi Zessner knows she isn't the only contender for the title. The other favorite is definitely Monika Stadelmann. She's a very good cyclist and she has also been in the business for many years. I've known Heidi Cessna very well and for a long time and already 10 years ago I've raced with her. She was always faster. 
but we started a race together two weeks ago and I beat her for the first time in my life. So I'm extremely motivated for tomorrow. All my life I've been dreaming to win such a race. I'm going to do everything possible to fulfill this dream on Sunday. It's 5.30 in the morning on race day. Pro and amateur athletes arrive at Lake Guggenberger to prepare their bikes and get ready for the swim. The tension is rising. Of course, you're always nervous and you start. You don't know what to expect, right? You don't know where, how, what will turn out in the end, but just hoping for the best. It's my third Ironman, and I'm confident, but it's going to be very hot. Now I can feel the tension, you know, a bit of a tingling feeling in my stomach. Now really it can start. And even the pros, amongst the 1,200 athletes from 54 countries, feel a bit nervous. Everything is prepared, and now I can focus on the transitions and the race, and I'm very nervous. I just put my nutrition on my bike, checked the tire pressures and inflated it properly, and now I'll warm up a little bit, and then I'm hopefully able to put everything I've learned into the race. The bike is ready, and the team has done a great job and it's all well prepared. So I don't have to do anything anymore. I just have to swim, cycle and run a little bit and then the day is over already. The 3.8 kilometer swim in the Guggenberger Lake will be two big loops. First on the outside around the Yellow Boys, before getting inside and looping around the Red Boys. It's just before 7 a.m. The start is now a few minutes away. Everybody is tense and excited. Not only Mickey Raylett in his first ever Ironman, but also the thousands of amateurs who will dive into the unknown, including Ziggy Herlinger. More than 1,200 people dive into the 19 degrees Celsius lake. The swim is always a fierce battle of hands and legs everywhere, making the exercise even more challenging. The fastest swimmer will finish in less than an hour. For the rest of the field, it's only the start of a long day. All athletes have to be out the water before the 2 hour 20 cutoff time. In the lead, a group of three men with Michael Raylett, Dirk Bockel and Daniel Hogsworth has opened a gap of 50 meters over the chase pack. Just behind the group, chasing the men is the women's favorite Heidi Zessner, together with Austrian Monica Stadelmann and American Alessa Scudamora. The leading group has found a good pace and cruises along the boys, keeping good distance over the chasers. The gap has increased to 200 meters. Amateur Ziggy Hellinger is in the middle of the pack with thousands of other swimmers. He aims to finish in one hour, 20 minutes. 45 minutes after the start, the group of three leaders approach the end of the 3.8K swim. Michael Raylett exits the water in first position, followed closely by Dirk Bockel and Daniel Hogsworth from Great Britain. The favorites are there. Michael Raylett is the fastest in transition one, closely followed by Dirk Bockel from Luxembourg. With a gap of more than three and a half minutes, the first chasers are exiting the water. And here, the top five men after the swim. Mike Raylett leading, with Dirk Bockel and Daniel Hawksworth following. Jan Siren and Thomas Dessau make up the top five. Alyssa Scudamore is the first woman out of the water, closely followed by Heidi Zessner and Monika Stadelmann. But in the transition, the German is the fastest and leaves for the 180k bike ride in first position. Only 35 seconds separates the top five women. Most of the field is still in the water, and so is Ziggy Hellinger. After one hour and 12 minutes, he finally appears, eight minutes ahead of schedule. A great performance for the 48-year-old from Regensburg. Mission two, getting rid of the wetsuit as quick as possible. The swimming went well, even though I had to say that at the boys you get a few knocks on your head, lost the goggles twice. Iron Ziggy is off for the bike ride. 
He hopes to finish the 180 Ks in six hours. In first position, powering away, Michael Raylett is leading the race, increasing the gap on Dirk Bockel, who was renowned to be a strong bike rider. In the women's field, Monika Stadelmann and Heidi Zessner are shadowing each other. The bike course consists of a 90-kilometer loop that has to be completed twice. The first part goes to the northeast of the city, and after 15K, riders will experience impressive climbs through the national park via Chevalet, climbing a total of 1,400 meters. The second part of the course, less hilly, allows the athletes faster speeds. The fans, in their thousands, line the side of the road to support the 1,200 athletes. For his first full-distance Ironman, Ichi Raylet is riding strong. The gap to Dirk Bockel is growing. In the 20 kilometers, the German has taken 1 minute 30 off the Luxembourg athlete. Most of the athletes are now on the road as well, experiencing the beautiful landscape and atmosphere around Regensburg and passing by the famous monument Valhalla. For most of them, the bike will last more than six hours. After 107 kilometers, Michael Raylett is averaging 43 kilometers an hour. He is on course, record-breaking pace. Will Raylett be able to maintain this impressive speed? Monika Stadelmann and Heidi Zessner are still together in the lead of the women's race, and the collaboration seems to work perfectly. A few kilometers down the road behind the leaders, Ziggy Hellinger's face shows no sign of fatigue. The 48-year-old is cruising at his own pace, on time, on schedule. It had to be expected. Mickey Rail had put too much effort into the first lap. The gap to Dirk Bockel has now shortened by more than two minutes in 20 kilometers. After 150 kilometers, the race now has a new leader. Dirk Bockel from Luxembourg has not only overtaken, he is flying to transition. Behind him, Mickey Raylett is paying for his earlier efforts. In the women's race, Heidi Zessner is now making her move on Monika Stadelmann. And after 123 kilometers, the gap has grown to 239. Bockel, the new leader, is powering to the finish of the bike. Within 15 kilometers, he has grown a gap of 1 minute 10 seconds on Raylett, who seems to have recovered a bit. As the leaders approach the finish of the bike, Ziggy is on track. He's done 123 kilometers of the bike, averaging 30 kilometers an hour. The bike part is over for Dirk Bockel. His average speed for 180 kilometers, 39.85 kilometers an hour. It's now time for the marathon. Michael Raylett is now finishing the bike. He's four minutes, six seconds behind Bockel. The German is a strong runner, but would he be able to catch the leader? How much energy has he spent on the bike? Remember, it's his first long distance race. Michael Raylard has just finished the bike in second position, four minutes behind the leader. He will now try to catch Dirk Bockel, who has started the run at a good pace. Heidi Zessner has held on to her lead and built the gap over Monika Stadelmann. As she enters the transition, her advantage is now three minutes, 12 seconds. Zessner is a good runner and will be confident going into the marathon. Back to the men. Michael Raylett has started well into the race. After the bikes, these were the top five men. Bockel leader with five hours 18 in total. Raylett, Holtzworth, Buxhofer and Twig chasing. In the front though, Bockel is running strong. The man from Luxembourg seems on track to win his first Ironman. After the first 10K lap, the gap hasn't changed. Monika Stadelmann is now into the run, but it seems the Austrian is suffering. Her pace is significantly slower than that of the leader, Heidi Zessner. Yeah, 
Most of the best amateurs are on the run as well. The marathon consists of a 10-kilometer loop through the old city of Regensburg and has to be run four times. It's sunny, but not too warm, around 25 degrees Celsius. Great conditions for the athletes. Seven hours, 17 minutes after the start of the race, Ziggy finishes the bike in exactly six hours. He's on schedule. Not too bad for his first ever Ironman. The mindset before the 42-kilometer run is clear. I'm now going to run 10 kilometers, and this four times, so I'm not doing a marathon. Will Ziggy's tactics work out? One last kiss from his daughter, Catherine, and off he goes. At the front of the race, Mickey Raylett is still in second position. At the half marathon mark, the gap to the leader, Dirk Bockel, hasn't moved. If Bockel keeps this pace, he will be challenging Farisel Sutton's course record of 8 hours, 13 minutes, 37 seconds. Despite the heat, Heidi Zessner is on track in the women's race, holding on strong to her lead. The German has the unique chance to win her first Ironman. Behind her, things have changed. Age grouper Nicole Bretting has moved into second position. Still in third, Monika Stadelmann. But a few moments later, she will pull out of the race. Not able to eat, with the empty tank, her legs gave up. As time passes, the 10-kilometer loop gets busier and busier. For Ziggy, everything still seems to be on track. For Dirk Bockel, the finish line is getting closer. Farisal Sultan's course record will be smashed. What an impressive performance by the man from Luxembourg. It's the first Ironman win for the 35-year-old who finished fourth in Hawaii last October. And it's also his personal best. I was happy that Mickey wasn't closer to me. Sometimes the gap was at three minutes, sometimes at eight minutes, which allowed me to play, which I must say I like. It was really fun today, and there were great fans along the track. The weather was ace, too. A little bit less than seven minutes behind Dirk Bockel, Michael Raylett finishes in second position in his first ever Ironman. What a great achievement for the German, proving that he will be a serious contender for Kona Hawaii next October. Raylett, who doesn't forget to congratulate the day's winner. There were moments where I really felt bad, especially in the run where I had moments that didn't look like running at all, and I really had to dig deep mentally to fight through them. But I'm extremely happy that I have my first Ironman under my belt. In third position, Swiss Mike Schiffler has put down a strong performance on the bike and on the run in order to climb on the podium, and this despite exiting the swim in 185th position, even grabbing the fastest run split of the day. In the women's race, Heidi Zessner can now start to celebrate. She is just a few meters from the finish line. The 34-year-old German wins her first Ironman race in 9 hours, 43 minutes, 52 seconds. I can't explain my feelings. I am so happy. Till the end, I couldn't believe that this would be possible. This race was so hard. I started cramping at the start of the run and got scared that the cramps would come back throughout the race. I finally made it. And I'm so happy. Second position goes to age grouper Nicole Bretting. What a performance for the 40-year-old German. Only 6 minutes, 26 seconds behind Zessner. And Russian Maria Lemesova finally grabs third position, 30 seconds behind Bretting. The emotions of all age groupers crossing the finish line as they become an Ironman are palpable the feeling of having achieved the biggest goal of their lives.
for Ziggy Herringer. The finish line is still 10 kilometers away, but his will is strong. The last 10 kilometers will be difficult, but I'm still confident. I will finish for sure, no doubt, even if I have to walk. I will cross the line. At the finish line, his wife Connie and daughter Caroline are waiting impatiently. I'm absolutely hysterical, on the edge. I think nothing can happen anymore, but I must admit I will be relieved once I have him with me again. For both, the tension is rising as time passes by with no sign of Siggy. But finally, after a little more than 12 hours, Ziggy appears on the final stretch. Pure emotion for the 48-year-old and his family. Super, super. You've been an Iron Man. I'm an Iron Man. On the last lap at the lake, I understood that I could not make it under 12 hours. So I started to have a bit of a walk in order to get into the finish safely. But this feeling, this feeling is amazing. Two years ago, Ziggy was weighing over 110 kilos. Today, he proved that in Iron Man, anything is possible. The sun has long set as the last athletes finished the marathon. But what a feeling tonight, knowing you are an Iron Man. For the second edition of the Iron Man 70.3 Italy, hundreds of athletes had come to Pescara on the Adriatic Sea. After the mass swim start, a small group of triathletes, amongst them Italian Daniel Fontana and Australian Ben Allen, went into the lead. Allen and Fontana went front on the bike and stayed together until transition two. But on his home soil, the Italian was too strong and repeated last year's victory in Pescara. In the women's race, Germany's Kristen Müller started a late charge on the run and celebrated her first win in Italy. The Ironman 70.3 UK is considered one of the most beautiful and difficult races on the circuit, and the event in Wimbledon saw a strong field in 2012. British athletes Mark Trelfall and Philip Graves took the lead after the swim, but Trelfall couldn't keep up with Graves' pace, and the 24-year-old secured his second title in Wimbledon. The women's race was fought out between the English athlete Emma Kate Lidbury and Ireland's Emma Mullen, who went one place better than last year and won this year's Ironman 70.3 UK. So many things make the World Championships in Kona incredibly special and the, and the pinnacle of our you know, our sporting can calendar. First, it's, it's the history. This is birthplace of our sport. I also feel very spiritual connection with the island. There's no other race like it. I went into the race in Kona 2007, just wanting to try and get a top 10. To, to finish first never even crossed my mind. The swim, was average, to be honest. Um, I went into the lead on the bike at around 120 kilometers. I really never looked back. I kept expecting the other girls to, to overtake me and, and they never did. And onto the marathon, I just enjoyed every single moment of that marathon. It was, it was wonderful in, in every respect. It was, it was challenging, the crowds were uplifting. I was in first place and I smiled all the way to the finish line.
That very first year, it was a surprise. It was surreal, but there's exhilaration and joy and a huge pride that all your hard work has paid off. Next week, we visit Frederick van Leerde at home in Belgium before following his quest to defend his title in Nice. And we look at Luc van Leerde's historic win at Kona in 1996 when he became the first European to win the World Champs.